Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be going through the concept of multivariate Gaussian distribution. So I found this document online from Stanford and it dates back to 2008, but the concept still remains the same. So let's go forward and see what it is. A vector valued random variable X, which is defined as this, is said to have multivariate normal Gaussian distribution with mean mu, which is of n dimension and covariance matrix, which is a square matrix of n cross n. Then the density function is defined as this essentially. Okay, so what does it mean? So as you can see, x is a column vector of n dimensions essentially. So where each of the dimension is an independent variable that is normally distributed. So let's take an example. So in case of making a prediction of house, what should be its price? Let's say we consider two variables. One is square foot. What is the area? other is the number of bedrooms that we have, which means both of them are normally distributed within themselves. So now they define mu, which is the mean, is also of n dimensions. So each of the Gaussian distribution, let's say x1 to xn, will have their respective mu i or mu1 and sigma1. And similarly, xn will be having mu n, sigma n. So that is their mean and standard deviation that each of these distributions hold. And we'll see what covariance matrix is as we move further. So this is the probability density function what they defined. So here mod of sigma, which is the mod of covariance matrix is a scalar value. And if you notice carefully, this full component is a scalar and it is used as a normalization factor. Whereas whatever is inside this exponential is a quadratic function because it's some function of X square. So which gives it a shape of parabola essentially which is right shifted at center value to be mu, which is the mean. Also, if you notice carefully, so this full multiplication is essentially a multiplication of n cross n matrix followed by n cross one, which is a column matrix. And then you have a row matrix as well. So all of these when multiplied give you a one cross one, which is a scalar value. And usually we write the random variable as normally distributed, which is with this n with mu, as the mean and covariance matrix telling about its spread and shape. Then they talk about relationship to univariate Gaussians. So they'll try to establish some kind of relationship between univariate Gaussians and multivariate Gaussians. So let's see that. So again, they define a density function for univariate Gaussian. So here the differences if I want to point that out. So covariance has changed to standard deviation, which is just the sigma and everything inside the exponent was written in a vector format. Now it's not because essentially you are dealing with one variable at a time. Okay. The argument exponential, this one is a quadratic of variable X, which is a parabola pointing downwards. Oh yeah, just a small correction. So here there was a negative sign as well. So this parabola essentially flips down and becomes like this. So that was the correction because of the negative sign. The coefficient in front is a constant that does not depend on x. Hence, we can think of it simply as a normalization factor to ensure the summation tends to one. Okay, so the area that is enclosed by the parabola essentially sums to one. So that normalization factor helps us achieve that thing. The figure on the left shows the univariate Gaussian density of single variable x. So you can think of this as one of the variables, which is x which is centered around its mean, which is five. And the spread is defined by sigma, which is the standard deviation. Whereas on the right hand side, you can see a density plot for two variables, x1 and x2. So you can think of this as x1, this as x2, and somewhere here near zero comma zero, that is their mean around which it is centered. Okay. So they see the coefficient in the front, which is this has even more complicated form than the univariate case. However, it still does not depend on X. Hence, it is again simply a normalization factor that ensures or the integration across all the independent variables kind of sum to one. So in this case, this integration happens n time because you have n independent variables. Now, if we put n is equal to one, which means this equation should be same as what we have for univariate probability density function. So let's see. 
so if you put n is equal to 1 in this case so 1 upon 2 pi root the covariance matrix boils down to a 1 cross 1 which is a scalar value and tells us about the variance so this signifies sigma square so you put sigma square to the power 1 by 2 you get sigma then you have integration minus infinity to infinity exponential minus 1 by 2 x minus mu now since we're not treating them as vectors so transpose will not make sense so we can directly multiply make it power 2 and we divide by covariance which is sigma square in this case and this should be equal to 1 so this is the same equation that we saw in this case which was this okay so that's how you kind of make a multivariate Gaussian distribution equation to a univariate Gaussian distribution equation let's understand the concept of covariance matrix the concept of covariance matrix is vital to understand the multivariate Gaussian distribution so if you have two random variables x and y the covariance is defined by this formula okay so covariance is the measure of how two random variables vary together that's where the covary essentially comes from it is similar to what variance is but variance just talks about single variable how it varies whereas covariance tells us about how two variables essentially vary together so if you change one variable how is second variable going to behave whether it will be increasing it will be decreasing those kind of stuff so covariance matrix is a n cross n matrix so let's consider n is equal to 2 so in our case 2 cross 2 matrix where you have covariance of x comma x covariance of y comma x covariance of x comma y and covariance of phi comma y so these are all the four cell values that you fill in so now let's see and put these values in this formula and see what we get so now for calculating covariance of x comma x if we substitute y is equal to x in this case so it becomes expectation of x minus expectation of x then again x minus expectation of x whole expectation so expectation of x is nothing but the mean for that variable so this essentially becomes expectation of x minus mu x whole square which is nothing but you take the average across all the data points that you have so this boils down to summation of x minus mu x whole square and let's say you have n data points so this is what is covariance of x comma x which is nothing but sigma square so which is the variance that you get across random variable x so if we complete this full matrix again you will have sigma x square similarly for this you will have sigma y square you will have some values filled at this place and similar value at this place so this becomes a symmetrical matrix now after calculation if you get these values to be positive it would mean a positive covariance which means if you vary x y also increases in the same trend whereas if you get some values let's say this or even this as negative then if one value increases then other value decreases so this is a kind of relationship that you get from this covariance matrix so this is a full idea of covariance matrix let's see what else do they have the diagonal covariance matrix case to get an intuition of what multivariate Gaussian is consider a simple case of n is equal to 2 where the covariance matrix sigma is diagonal okay so they are considering the covariance matrix which is this so such a covariance matrix would mean there is no interaction happening among the different random variables that's why they are not varying if you vary some other variable or so so they consider x which is made up of two random variables x1 and x2 for x1 you get mu1 which is its mean and similarly for x2 you get mu2 so they put all these values in the multivariate Gaussian density function so here they have put the value of sigma and then you have minus 1 by 2 so this was x minus mu transpose so which is again x1 minus mu1 and x2 minus mu2 transpose then you have the covariance matrix inverse and again you have the x minus mu1 and x minus mu2 term okay so now they expand the determinant so which is this into this minus this into this so this is the full format then they take the inverse of the covariance matrix and since the covariance matrix is diagonal so taking a reciprocal of each of the diagonal elements essentially gives us the 
inverse matrix. Once that is done, they multiply both of these two matrices and keep the rest of the things same. So here they have like power 1 by 2, so which resolves to 2 pi sigma 1 sigma 2. And finally, they multiply both of these matrices and get some value in this case. So if you see, this is exponential of, if I say this as x, this as y, so this becomes x minus y, which can be written as exponential of x into exponential of minus y. So this is the first component and this is the second component. So now if you notice this thing very carefully, this is a very important result. They mention as well, the last equation is the product of two independent Gaussian densities, one with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 square, other with mu2 and sigma2 square. So essentially multiplying two independent Gaussian distribution, which are univariate, if you have a covariance matrix, which is diagonal, kind of boils down to making it a multivariate Gaussian distribution. So next they talk about how does the isocontours of the multivariate Gaussian look like? So they again take the same example of sigma is equal to a diagonal matrix, which is the covariance matrix. And they define mu to be mu1 and mu2, where mu1 corresponds to the random variable x1 and mu2 for the x2. In the last section, we saw the derivation of this thing. So what they say is, if you assign this to a constant c and solve this equation, by doing a cross multiplication, taking log on both the sides to avoid the exponential, then dividing essentially to remove the minus sign, and finally you come up with this equation. So if you say this to be under root of R1, this to be under root of R2, then this is the equation that you get. So this is the equation of a ellipse essentially, which has a center at mu1, comma mu2 where R1 is the length of the axis along X1 and R2 is the length of the axis along X2. So if you put X1 is equal to mu, then this thing full gets to zero. Then X2 becomes R2 plus mu2. Let's move forward. I guess we are on the last leg. So they show this diagram to talk about how does the variation in axis changes the shape of the contour. The left shows a heat map indicating the values of density function for an axis aligned multivariate Gaussian with mean is equal to 3 comma 2. So if you see, this is the 3, this is 2. So essentially, yeah, 3 comma 2 is the center of this contour. With the diagonal covariance matrix B, 25, 0, 0, 9, which is in the ratio of 5 to 3. So essentially, this again becomes your minor axis and major axis. So major axis to minor axis is 5 to 3. The figure on the right hand side, shows a heat map indicating the value of the density function for a non-axis aligned multivariate Gaussian with mean equal to 3 comma 2 and covariance matrix 10 5 5 5. Here the ellipse are again centered at 3 comma 2 but now major and minor axis have been rotated to via linear transformation. So 10 comma 2 which is 2 is to 1 ratio that is still maintained and this 5 the diagonal 5 the off diagonal 5s are essentially responsible for rotating it at a certain angle so that's it guys i guess we are done with the document if you like this video please do share it with your friends also make sure you like and comment to the channel thank you